Welcome to an explanation video about the Fellenius and Bishop's methods for the TU Delft course Soil Mechanics. The goal of these methods is to determine the factor of safety of a sliding plane. Slopes in homogeneous soils generally fail with a circular failure mechanism as shown. We can calculate the safety of a specific sliding plane. We have to do this with many planes until we find the one with the lowest factor of safety. That is the plane which is most likely to fail. We call that the critical factor of safety. In this video, we are going to look at how you can calculate the factor of safety for a single sliding plane. Don't forget, in reality you have to calculate many of them. In general, the sliding plane is a circular arc with radius r and angle theta, like shown. This sliding plane may be only a few millimeters thick. To analyze this problem and determine the factor of safety of this plane, we have to discretize the problem. This means we are going to split the embankment up into a number of different slices and consider the contribution of each slice separately. The more slices we use, the more accurate the solution will be. To go in more detail and explain the different steps that should be taken, Exercise 6 of tutorial sheet 8 will be explained in more detail. There are two separate methods, named after the engineer who created them, Fellenius and Bishop. Before we go into either method, let's have a look at how we can get the key geometric features from our described slope. Two things are needed to determine the geometry of each slice. The angle between the vertical through the origin point and the base of the slice equals alpha. The height of the slice h is evaluated at the center of the slice. We make the assumption that the curved surface of the slice is straight. This also explains why more slices will give a more accurate solution. And the width of the slice is in that case smaller, resulting in less of a simplification of the problem. The given problem, taken from tutorial sheet 8, is as shown. The given parameters will be explained later on. We can approximate the arc-shaped sliding plane by drawing straight lines from point to point. The geometry of the sections is given in the table as the x and y location of the points, and the angle with respect to the vertical. With this knowledge, you know the width of each slice which is equal to 2.9 meter. The coordinates and angles to point O of the corners of the slices, in the picture shown as the black dots, are given in the table and are also given in the exercise. With this information, we are able to determine the alpha halfway each slice. Alpha is equal to the mean value of the angle of both end points of the slices. Using this method for each slice, the angle to the vertical is given in a table. To calculate the height h, it is easiest to split the height into a part above the ground level and a part that is below the ground level. The ground level is indicated by the blue dotted line. h1 can be calculated with the vertical coordinates y that are given in the table, again here assuming a straight line between the points. Note that we use the sign convention of negative below the ground level. H2 can be calculated using trigonometry. The tangent of the total slope can be calculated and is then equal to the slope height h over the slope width w, which are given in the table. H2 at the midpoint can then be calculated by multiplying the horizontal distance to the halfway point of the slice by the tangent of theta. When h2 is known, the total height can be determined by subtracting h1 from h2. Now we will start with the explanation of the Fellenius method. On this slide the formula of the Fellenius method is shown. c, gamma and phi are sole properties and are therefore usually given in an exercise. P is the pore pressure, which is not relevant in this question, 
as the water table is far below the ground surface. What remains are alpha and h, which we calculated before. Let's have a closer look at the method itself. We can split the method up into convenient parts to make keeping track of it easier. We need to calculate these values for each slice and then sum the total numerator and denominator. When filling in the variables for each slice, it's easy to make a table to keep the overview. The header of such a table is shown. In this table, you can keep track of the outcomes for the different variables which are shown on the slide. The numerical substitutions are given for slice 1, and feel free to pause the video to check yourself. The factor of safety can then be calculated by dividing the sum of C by the sum of D, and this is equal to 2.53 for this problem. Bishop's method works in a similar way as Fellanius's method, and it also uses slices and has the same variables which are determined in the same way. Only the formula differs, as this method also takes into account inter-slice forces. Here, the Bishop formula is shown. To determine the solution, you need to iterate this formula, because the factor of safety is on both sides of the equation. You continue iterating until the factor of safety doesn't change significantly anymore after an iteration. Again, we split up the equation into convenient parts, and for each slice we determine the variables and put it in a table. When you start with factor of safety 1, the values for f, for the example of tutorial sheet 8, are 2.459, 2.548, and 2.550. When we notice the factor of safety doesn't change significantly anymore, and we have our final answer. Most of the time, the amount of iteration required for a question are given on an exam. This slide shows the interim results in a table, and again the factor of safety can be calculated using the formula that is given. Here, the table is updated with the new values for the new factor of safety after one iteration. Thank you for watching the explanation video about the Fellanius and Bishop's method for the TU Delft course Soil Mechanics. Good luck with your studies.